What's happening guys? It's Nick Boletto from Boletto Brigade, back in front of the camera making you guys another informational video. So if you know who Mike Zordas is, or if you don't, I'll give you a brief description. He is a professor at Florida Atlantic University here in the United States. Um, and he is very well known uh, within the fitness industry as an expert in the field um, in terms of <clears throat> testing out different ways to improve people's performances, testing out uh, how different factors can uh, affect your physiology, and uh, ultimately how you can just get better. And most of his studies pertain to lifting, although he does do a lot of research on volleyball players as well. Um, so if you are a fan of science or a fan of Mike Zordas, I suggest that you go ahead, grab some lotion, grab some tissues, because you're going to need them. So today I'm going to be talking about a paper that Mike Zordas is the co-author of. It's called Contextual Interference Effects on the Acquisition of Skill and Strength of the Bench Press. So all of us would like to improve our bench press both the strength and the skill of it. So there's a few terms I need to define so that you guys can understand this. Um, the first of those is contextual interference. So contextual interference essentially refers to a situation in which you're practicing one skill in the midst of practicing another skill. So what you're gonna see in this article, which I'm gonna post the abstract um, on the screen probably a couple different times so you guys can take a look at it once I give you all of the necessary information but uh, Mike Zordos and the rest of his colleagues are looking at low contextual interference versus high contextual interference in learning a skill and also improving your performance in a skill so low contextual interference would be probably what most of us do in the gym where we go we do you know three sets of deadlifts then we move on we do three sets of leg press then we move on we do three sets of rows it's just three sets then you move on to the next exercise high contextual interference would be you do you know one set or you know it doesn't even have to be lifting either it could be like you shoot 10 free throws then you go and you practice dribbling for 10 minutes then you go and you work on defensive slides for 10 minutes and then you go back and you shoot 10 free throws so it's just a cycling sort of of uh, just different motor skills and the theory behind this is that context high contextual interference leads to better learning and ultimately better in better performance over time um, however low contextual interference leads to better performance in the short term and similar learning in the short term but again high contextual interference leads to better learning and performance in the long term um, and then the last uh, two things that I have to define for you are the difference between the motor learning and motor performance which by now I think you might have a vague understanding of it motor learning simple, simply just refers to how a task is done uh, regardless of the outcome of the task. So when we're talking about the bench press, um, you know, there are uh, just a bunch of different cues and it just comes down to your form and your technique. Whereas motor performance comes down to the outcome and it doesn't matter how you got to the outcome, it's just the outcome itself. So you lifted 185 pounds for five repetitions. You know, it's a question of the weight that you moved and it's a question of how many repetitions and it's a question of whether or not you actually completed said repetitions. Um, so motor learning, how you do it, motor performance, what you actually did. Now we're gonna get into the actual article. All right, so the subjects in this study are completely untrained individuals, uh, about college age individuals. They either have never lifted before or they haven't lifted in at least four years. So completely untrained. Um, at the start of the test, they find their one repetition max, and then it goes off percentage of your one rep max. Everybody in the study is doing the same amount of sets and reps. The volume is not equated for because there's both women and men and people of varying strength degrees, so it wouldn't make sense to equate for volume. If somebody can lift a lot more weight than somebody else, then the same amount of volume would just not really make a whole lot of sense. So. Um, for four weeks, everybody in the study bench press twice a week, four sets per, uh, per workout, so eight sets over the course of a week, and then they did that for four weeks. 
In the low contextual interference group, they perform four sets of bench press all in a row, you know, with, with ne the necessary rest. And then they performed four sets of dart throwing. And the experimenters didn't tell them that the bench press or the dart throwing was the object of this study. So they were trying as best they could to actually get better at dart throwing as well as the bench press. However, the dart throwing, you had to throw with your non-dominant hand. So then the high contextual interference group performed one set of bench press followed by one set of dart throwing and they alternated until they had performed four sets of dart throwing and four sets of bench press. Um, so the high contextual interference and low contextual interference groups performed the same amount of bench press and the same amount of dart throwing. High contextual just alternated them. Low contextual did all of the bench press, then all the dart throwing. All right, so get on with it, Nick. What happened? What were the results? Well, I'll tell you the results. So after four weeks of training, the high contextual and low contextual interference groups had similar performance outcomes, meaning that both of them increased strength at a relatively similar rate. So performance outcomes, not a significant difference. As far as technique goes, so which group actually performed the skill better? Not much of a difference, a slightly higher, uh, slightly better um, technique was showed in the high contextual interference group. However, it wasn't a large enough difference to be significant. So what was the point of this video? What was the point of this study? Well, one way to test motor learning is to do a retention test. So typically when you take several weeks off from practicing a motor skill, you become detrained and you know as any of us know even after a deload week we typically come into the gym and everything just feels a little off whether weights are moving slowly whether our technique and our form is off you know we know that we detrain like slightly however i would say that deloads are necessary and are fine um so they did a retention test so i believe the retention test was four weeks after the four weeks of training so they took four weeks off they weren't allowed to bench press at all. And then they came in and the high contextual interference group not only performed better, meaning that they lifted more weight, but they also performed the skill better. And both of these statistics were significant. So what does that mean? It means that high contextual interference in the long run allows you to perform better and allows you to do the skill better. Feel free to comment below if you liked video, if you like this video, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know because I love reading research and I love trying to, you know, apply it to real life. So, if you want to see more videos like this, please put a comment below. Remember to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.